Hello and welcome to the 2020 season of Alberta Camping. Um, things have taken an interesting turn this year uh, with the coronavirus that started way back in December has spread worldwide and right now it's really up in the air whether we'll be camping or not. All the provincial parks have been closed down and uh, campfire bans in forestry areas. Um, we understand there are private campgrounds and crown lands still available for camping. Uh, but with all the people that love to camp in Alberta, that may be a little crowded. And we don't know once the summer months uh, appear if that'll even be an option. So, fingers crossed. We thought we'd come out to the trailer today just to uh, grab things, chairs, my sippy cup. So Barbecue. that we can kind of pretend that we're camping in our backyard. It's looking like backyard camping this year, boys. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. We have a propane fire pit that we use during fire ban times. And we'll have a fire in the backyard, I guess, with our drinks and then sleep in our own beds. Or a tent. We have a tent and some cots. <laughs> okay, so if that happens, really honestly, I'm videotaping the entire evening. Like, and you crawling into a tent. Could and be the you... entire season this year. Can we really set up a tent in our backyard? Yeah. That would be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually. John, you always swore that you would never, ever sleep in a tent. Well, if you get down to it, you might have to. Well, that excites me greatly, actually. So, what do we know about where and what we can do this summer? So far, eh, it's not looking good. Uh, there's a lot of private campgrounds that are opening, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of caveats with that. The bathrooms won't be open, the shower rooms won't be open. Uh, they have to supply power, and they have to supply water. So that cuts out a lot of private campgrounds. And there's also a lot of municipalities who are saying no. So like Drumheller announced yesterday, for example, all their private campgrounds are off limits. So this so is April 25th. So that was yeah. the, on the 24th that was announced. So I don't lose hope for the summer because I get a feeling that we're trying to get the numbers to go down. And I think by the end of May, we're going to have a good idea. Uh, May long weekend is definitely out. But I You've think heard that? It's definitely out, yeah. Oh. Um, towards the end of May, I get a feeling that we'll find out more, and I think there might be a push for Canada Day that we might see some campgrounds start to open. Um, the parks and stuff, I think it's a lot of a lot of it's to do with the staff. They don't want to risk their staff, which makes a lot of sense. Well, and it's also because um, the whole fire thing, fire ban, that's huge because... Yeah. The, the last thing they need are forest fires um, when we we're pouring all our resources into fighting COVID-19. Yeah. Um, so that is primarily the reason for the bans um, in provincial parks. And but they're, they're trying to, what happened one weekend is it was beautiful out. They hadn't closed the parks yet. Um, and everybody had cabin fever and they went out to the parks. And that caused a lot of problems where they couldn't, do the social distancing. Uh, the parking lots were packed and uh, people were, you know, off to Banff and Kenmore and uh, all the hiking trails and, and people couldn't keep distance. And uh, so they want to keep people close to home and they don't want people traveling and uh, going into those smaller towns where they don't have the, you know, the medical capacity to help people if something did occur. So I think make sure you're following the uh, current regulations because doing so will push the numbers down and we can go camping eventually. Yeah. You got to remember that it's not just, you know, the park staff. It's also, yeah, it's little towns that are around the campgrounds. They don't want the traffic right now. They don't want somebody bringing in COVID. So that's kind of going to put a kibosh on things as well. And like I said, maybe July long weekend, you might see some campgrounds open, but 
it's I'm really not expecting it's, all of them and i think it's going to be a lot of limited services as well you yeah they'll open the campgrounds there'll probably be you no know, firewood sales the bathrooms will be closed who knows how payment will work it might only be the reservation only campgrounds that open because they can do online payments so it's, first come first serve it's really out. everything is so up in the air like we're just spouting off speculation um we have no idea we don't have the inside scoop on anything yep. uh we are just um hopeful and keeping our fingers crossed that we do get to you know go out for at least a, a little bit we are used to being out uh from now until after thanksgiving um so this this is very sad for us and it's a little bit painful not to be out and about um but we also recognize that um, this is what needs to be done um, for us all to be safe and to be able to camp fully next year. Because if Possibly. we don't, if we don't do this, then things are not going to open up. If we don't obey and listen to what the medical uh, people are telling us, and then, then it's going to go on forever and ever and ever, and, and we don't want that to happen. So we're really paying attention. Uh, to what they're saying um, with all the events, all the major mass events and stuff being cancelled all summer long um, it's hard to say right now if they're going to open any type of camping um, also remember if they're not allowing bathrooms and playgrounds and um, you know stores and all that kind of stuff in campgrounds you're going to need a trailer because you're going to need um, you know something that's you can go to the bathroom in. So that kind of limits tenters. Well, unless actually, they bring out a little bucket. Just keep in mind that private campgrounds aren't, al aren't allowed to have tenters right now. So Yeah. Which brings, brings up the old uh, Crown Land camping stuff that people are pushing online and thinking, you know, they're losing their rights to go Crown Land camping. I think, yeah, you have the right to go and use public lands, uh, but all the public use areas that have staging areas are already closed. Um, you're going to have trouble getting into a lot of spots with a trailer unless you've got a four-wheel drive and maybe yeah. have flipped axles on your trailers. And if everybody does it, I guarantee they're going to close that as well. Yeah, I'm just seeing that's what I'm afraid of with the Crown Land. Um, if it's open, great. But I think now, because everything else is closed, it might get overcrowded. Well, that's the thing. Um, be, and then they'll end up closing that. It's so. going to be... Uh, Closing that because there's too many crowds and also there's no fire. So, yeah. you know, if you're going out to, and that's only in the forested areas. So if you're going, if you have, you know, if you know from Crown Land, it's middle of the prairies, it's a little different. But if you're talking the forested areas, the forest protection areas, there's no fires. Yeah. And you know what? There, there's a lot that like we don't know about. Um, so you are encouraged to, uh, you know, make a list of all those Crown Land places put them in the uh, comments and share that information out uh, private campgrounds that you know about that are going to be open in Alberta I uh, would be really we have a Facebook page Alberta camping Facebook page uh, where you can share pictures and comments and uh, it would be really nice to maybe compile a list of places where people know that things are going to be open uh, some of the county campgrounds are considering it so we'll see what happens with that as we get closer to, you know, the major high season of camping. Yeah, I would not count on that either. Uh, yeah. Basically, all these little towns don't want people coming into them, so there's a good chance they're not going to open up their campgrounds either. Yeah, it's hard to say. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting summer. Well, um, Aspen Crossing, they opened up. Aspen Crossing's um, open. There's a few other ones that are open right now, but... Well, like that said, was like a trial run, really, when they opened up, uh, was it Easter weekend? Uh, and Alberta Health Services was really keeping an eye and they gave them really strict rules as to what they could allow and our neighbors went and I understand it was packed. Yeah, just like keep in mind site. it's going to be packed all summer if it's only yeah. private campgrounds open so you're probably not going to get into them anyway. So it's going to be tough. Mr. Positive. Well, people are going to book months ahead. Weeks ahead. Like nobody's... Let's get on if there. If there's only a few left, you're not going to... If you're not going to have much luck... Now, the other option, of course, if you know a rancher or somebody who has some private land, yes, that now is the time to hit them up. But, yeah. again, you're talking potential liability, so they may not be willing to let you camp there. But if you're friends with somebody, yeah. it's, it's worth a asking. good option. 
And it, of course, that's not something you would advertise. That's something that no, you would make. Private. You'd make an arrangement with that owner of their land. But um, if you know somebody, why not ask? Yep. It doesn't hurt to ask. And as as uh, Doctor Henshaw is saying, don't go to your summer cabins. Uh, I think that would pretty much include all these people who have trailers on permanent spots down in Kukanusa, for example, or in Vermeer in that area. They don't want you there. And yeah, it's hard to say. It's going to be a tough summer if we can't. People can't go there. Hard to say, but we're going to stay positive, and we've got our camp stove and our barbecue, and we picked up our chairs, and our yard sea and ladder ball, um, and so we're going to have a mock camping in our backyard, and uh, keep searching for places that would allow us to camp. And we, where we park our trailer, actually. We might end up just camping right here. Because. <laughs> if we're allowed. There's nobody here. It's a compound. And there's no other trailers or nothing in here. So you never know. It's a gravel pad. But, yeah. We could go for walks here at least. Yeah. And there's like woods around. And moose and bears and, and stuff. And moose and bears. And... Yeah. So we just have to get permission. <laughs> but so. yeah, it's, that's the scoop so far this year. We're going to stay positive. We're going to stay healthy. We're going to stay home. Um, we're not doing social distancing because we happen to be living t with each other. So, Right. <laughs> so that's why we're crowded in together. Uh, so I just wish everybody the best. Um, just listen to what they're saying. The, the meta Hinshaw is amazing. Uh, listen to what she has to say. And uh, the more we do so, the faster we will be able to get back to what our old normal was and not have to live in this new normal. Well, you're gonna have to make sure that numbers are going down towards the end of May. We're supposed to peak in mid-May, so hopefully yeah. the numbers will turn around and start going down. And if the numbers go down, then there's a good chance we'll be camping by July. Quite Maybe. Quite possibly, but yeah. We're just speculating. <laughs> We're not spouting the truth here, but this is just kind of us watching. John watches the numbers and the charts and uh, listens to all the updates. Uh, so he's he's right on top of um, kind of looking at the peaks and the reoccurrence, the possibility of a reoccurrence. And and I'm, I'm a realist. Heather's an optimist, but I'm a realist. So <laughs> I, I like can, to stay positive if possible. And I try to be real. So <laughs> I'm basically, you know, I understand that if we do get to go camping this summer, it's going to be continued social distancing. So that's going to be a factor in this summer's camping. So It'll be limited. Yeah, it, it won't be, you won't be able to group camp. and. Yeah, group camps will be out, but stuff yeah. like that. But you might, you know, you'll be able to do social distancing at campgrounds and campsites. So I, I get a feeling that they may open those just because Albertans want to get out. Yeah. But well, no guarantees. Everybody's saying they're going stir crazy already. I can imagine what. And we're only about five weeks into it. Yeah, I can't imagine what the summer would be like if we have to continue on this path, but if that's the way it is, that's the way it is. Well, we already know that we're continuing on this path for the summer, but it's just I mean, like with camping and... How much they lighten up. Yeah. So, it is what it is. We can't change it. Uh, we can just listen and follow rules and uh, just keep, keep your fingers crossed that we can go camping and I can... Uh, have a drink around a fire. Yeah. yeah. Normally this time of year, this would be our first camping video. <laughs> it is, because we're standing by our trailer. Hi, trailer. Yep. Our trailer had a flat tire we drove up. It's all fixed now, but looks like we're gonna have to buy some tires. Yeah, might not buy them this year, but it looks like. We might not be pulling it out, so no. <laughs> maybe save some money and uh, buy four next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh well. It is what it is. All right. I just want to um, really quickly before we end, uh, support local businesses. I'm going to put that out there because yeah. they're the ones that are that are struggling uh, the most. And uh, they, I know one. This is a still North Design Company out of Williams Lake, BC, and uh, the owner is actually doing everything. She had to fire all her staff. Uh, so orders are taking a long time, but she's keeping her business going because she's not qualifying for any kind of financial aid at this point. Um, so um, she has a website. Uh, she's lovely. Uh, you can message her and she'll help you with sizing. So this is the hoodie that I got. Uh, so it's still North Design Company and we'll put the 
link to the website under this video. This video is not sponsored by these guys. Just no, it's so not. Aware. No, I, she doesn't even know I'm doing this. Uh, but she was really lovely, and I know she's. Um, the, you know, the businesses are hurting in and around uh, everywhere, actually. Uh, but I'm really trying to push those uh, Calgary or Canadian, yeah, Canadian make sure, companies. Make sure you're supporting your businesses in your community, but don't drive to another community to, to support them. That's what we're being told. So, Although we have a whole lot of COVID-19 in our community right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm afraid to do anything in my community. Yeah, exactly. It's scary. Yeah. But anyway, we're staying home. The majority of the time, it was so exciting to get in the car or get in the truck and come out through the trailer. I was like, I felt like I was going on a big fancy holiday. This is your holiday. This you. is my holiday. I was snapping pictures on my way out. I was that excited. She does that on the same road every time, though. Well, the mountains have a lot of snow on them right now. Every year. <laughs> same pictures. Same, same mountains. Doesn't do anything with them. But takes Different pictures. snow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay, well, stay healthy, stay happy, uh, just hold on to the, your loved ones, and social distance. And we'll try and do some more videos, probably from our backyard. From our backyard with John in a tent. Possibly. <laughs> Love you, John. Love you too, Heather. <laughs> Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Let's say happy camping, but... Mm. <laughs> <laughs>